Hey everyone, I'm Michelle from Nannies on Call and each week we're bringing you videos to educate and inspire you to be the best nanny you can be. Let's get right into it. So this week we're going to give you four tips on working in a household where the parents are also working from home. This is a new problem that's arisen during COVID. I hate, I hate to keep talking about COVID related issues, but there's a lot of things around nannies and nanny jobs that have changed during this time. And so we need to address those issues. So it used to be that most nannies were sole uh, caretakers, which means that they were taking care of the children on their own. The parents would leave the house, go to work, the nannies would be in charge of everything all day, and then the parents would come home at the end of the day. Obviously, you nannies were getting guidance from families on what they wanted the children to do, what activities, TV, no TV, those kinds of things. But ultimately, the nannies were in charge of when the children got hurt or when the children started crying, they would deal with that on their own. Now, the majority of parents are working from home and very few families are going out to work. So more and more nannies are working in households where the parents are home. And this has caused a lot of issues, <laughs> um, to say the least. So parents aren't used to working in a household or aren't used to working in the same space where their children are with their nannies. And so what you need to do as a nanny is be the educated one and the one that comes up with the solutions for how this is gonna work. Um, if you have any additional solutions, we'd love to hear about them, but let's start with these four to get you started. Okay, number one, communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. When the parents, now we're many, many months into COVID, but when the parents started working from home, really you should have sat down and come up with a plan. If you haven't done that yet, it's not too late. You can still sit down and communicate. We have a three part series on our blog about how to communicate with your family. So you can uh, look down below and I'll put a link to that blog series, but you want to have open communication about how you're feeling, how this is going to look, what, what the layout of that, household's going to be, what the expectations are. So communicate, communicate, communicate. And really that should be three points and this should be a seven point, seven point, um, seven points. So really communication is the number one thing that you need to do with the family that you're working for when they start working from home. Okay. Number two, establish boundaries and your role versus the parents role. Okay. So when the parents weren't home, you would be in charge. And so if the child started crying, the parent doesn't drive home from work to deal with that crying child. But now if they're in the other room or potentially at the dining room table, which we're gonna deal with in another point, they come rushing in, right? That's what's happening. And that's what we're hearing from nannies. And so they come rushing in to soothe the crying child because they also are enjoying some parents are enjoying being home, being able to see their children during the day, come and go as they please. But this causes a lot of disruption for the nanny. So what you need to do, going back to point number one, is communicate with the family. Have an understanding that when you're there, you're in charge and that you can deal with the crying child. Of course, if they wanna come and go, let's just say, every day they have lunch with their children. So they come out of their office and they sit down at the kitchen and they have lunch with you and the children then you understand that from 12 to one every day, the children are gonna see their parents. But if the children think every time they cry, mom's gonna come running out or dad's gonna come running out of the office, they are gonna cry more and the behavior is gonna get worse. So you need to establish with the parents what their role is during the day and what your role is during the day. And that if the child's crying, to understand and trust that you can handle it and that you will get things under control and they need to stay and do their work. And that's what you're there for is so that they can get their work done and you do your work okay so number three manage behavior so this is kind of what we were just talking about but back when my kids were young uh one day i had off and i took my daughter to gymnastics and at the end of gymnastics i wasn't part of the gymnastics class i was literally just sitting on the side and at the end of gymnastics class her coach came up to me and said you know what your daughter's a lot better when you're when she's here with the nanny and she her behavior is worse when she's here with you so of course Children try and work their parents the most that they can. So uh, you need to manage the children's behavior and, and understand that they now know their parents are there. And so there has to be a bit of 
change and understanding and and soothing because they know mom's in the other room or they know mom's in the kitchen working on the kitchen table whatever it is and and you have to understand that it may take a little bit longer maybe it takes some discussion with the children you know mom's here but she really has to work and I'm here to help you maybe it's that you go out more during the day to get some fresh air depends on where you live depends on what the restrictions are uh, but really managing the children's behavior when potentially parents are home and maybe you work for them when the parents were out at work all day every day and now they're home and the children's behavior has changed that's understandable and so it's just going to take a little bit of time and patience to work through that okay we're already at number four so number four is kind of i've alluded to it in a couple of other points but is to have a designated workspace now i know you don't have any control over that as the nanny but it can be something you have a discussion around right now i am working in our second bedroom so we changed the second bedroom into my office so that i could be out of the way my children are grown but still these are things you have to do if you're going to be working at home long term so having again going back to point number one communicating with the family that it's very difficult that they work on the kitchen table and that you're coming and going from the kitchen to get snacks or they, that that's where you do crafts half the day whatever it is just having that communication is there somewhere else they can go is there a solution of somewhere you can go whatever it is having a designated workspace where mom and dad say bye in the morning to the kids and that door is closed and the kids know that they cannot bother the children that that is helpful for you as the nanny it will help manage behavior it will help set expectations for the children and it will just make every everyone's lives easier and more productive so that's four tips for you i'm sure there are tons more that you've come up with now that you're working at home with parents it can be done it can work well you can have a great relationship with the family but communication and managing expectations is half the battle so please comment down below and let us know if there's anything you found that works really well uh hit the subscribe button i never know where it is because most of our most of the people who watch our video aren't subscribed so you may miss a video that's really interesting to you and of course uh make sure to leave a comment and check back next week when we have another video for you have a great day